So last night I continued on thinking about uh, what builds strength and the difference between strength training and hypertrophy training. Um, and then after the training session yesterday, after I had some food and whatever, I dug up some of the textbooks that I have on the topic and uh, this one caught my eye. I've read this book before in bits and pieces. Um, it's by Vladimir Zaitsorsky and William Kramer. Um, so it's basically a USSSR um, fella and a, and, and a States fella. So the Soviets have a, usually had a, a different kind of philosophy on training um, to the States. So this book was quite, quite interesting because it was a combination of both authors. Both of these dudes are uh, uh, sports scientists. Uh, the thing that caught my mind, uh, caught my attention was this pie chart here. Um, and I'll explain what, what's happening with this chart. So basically this chart, chart explains training intensities of elite athletes. So these people like Olympic level athletes. And the pie chart was basically the distribution of how much time they spent with a given rep range. Um, so the biggest portion here, the white uh, piece of the pie at the bottom, says 35% and this represents 70 to 80% of their one rep max. So the majority of time, a large portion of their time was spent with weights uh, around 70 to 80% of their one rep max. The next one is 26%, which is 80 to 90. Um, and then 24% uh, was spent with weights 60 to 70. Um, so only 7% of their time, which is this guy up here, um, was spent with weights over 90% towards 100%. Um, so basically, they've spent most amount of time with weights between 70 and 80%. Um, and then it was basically a split, equal split between 60 to 70, 80 and 90, basically. Um, so the vast majority of their time was spent between 60 and 90%. Um, which is interesting because 70 to 80% is basically five reps or so around there. 80% is around five reps. 70% um, you could maybe, maybe push out to 10 reps. Um, the very next page or the, or the two pages after that is a uh, basically a little piece which described this chart here which described what their research found out about where the most of the training should be um, and basically I'll read it out for you uh, it says here it seems that for athletes with more than one year of training experience the intensity of 80% of their one rep max is close to optimal uh, so basically this is a well-respected two authors, well-respected authors who basically did a whole bunch of research and of, of, you know, Soviet training logs and they found that for most people, 80% seems to build the most amount of strength and the most amount of improvement. So what does that mean? So anyway, I took all this and I crunched my own numbers and what I found was that I spent the vast majority of my time in terms of front squats at least. Um, with weights that are below my 50%. So you guys know that I've been doing sets of 20 in my warm-ups, um, and so that kind of inflates the, the, the amount of time, uh, the, the amount of reps I do below 50%. Um, I think it's something like like 10% of all of my reps is uh, between 60 and 100%. Um, the vast majority was spent 60 and below. Um, when it comes to back squats, <clears throat> I don't do many back squats um, below 50%, in fact, below 70%, because I use the front squats as a warm up and then I transition to the back squats, and that's my training session. So, what does all this mean? It means exactly what I thought it meant last night, and that's where the confusion is for me. Um, this idea that you can only build strength um, with weights that are kind of uh, in the one to five rep range. Um, you know, here it says that you should be using 80% of your one rep max. 80% of one rep max is kind of what most strength programs, powerlifting programs have recommended over the years. You know, five sets of five at 80%, you know, lead up to kind of that. Um, so this is consistent with the belief that, you know, lower reps build strength, which to me doesn't quite make sense because I've had quite the opposite experience personally, where I've added a whole bunch of volume in warm up sets, a whole bunch of sets of 20, and I feel a lot stronger and I feel a lot more stable on the weights. My joints feel a lot healthier. Um, so it's a head scratcher. Uh, 
I don't know. I don't know. So there's just one one piece one piece of literature that basically supports, you know, the status quo. Um, everyone seems to believe that anyway, um, which is not a surprise because you know, if 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 mainstream, if everyone says one thing, um, you can bet your bottom dollar that it's coming from reliable sources. If if you know there's consensus on the topic, but anyway, I'm going to continue doing what I've been doing. Um, if you're doing sets of five and whatever, like clearly you're doing the right thing according to the research. Um, now, mind you, <clears throat> that's, <clears throat> that's with lifters that are Olympic level lifters, right? So, uh, dudes who are competing for gold medals. I, and the majority of you guys, are nowhere near that. So, <clears throat> I guess you can make an argument for people like us, maybe 80% is too much. Maybe we should spend most of, my, uh, most of our time in the 60 to 70% range. Um, maybe that's why my experience is what it is right now. Um, I am nowhere near an Olympic athlete, and so it would be foolish of me to base my training on some of the dudes at the top. Um, that's one of the things that people always mess up. Uh, they, they see the training logs from the gold medalists of last year uh, or yesteryear, and they're like, I'm going to do exactly that, I'm going to have the same experience. No. You can't do that because that person has already built a base and you probably haven't. Um, these people have been probably lifting 20 years since the age of five or whatever. Um, there's something to be said about building a base. And I think what I'm doing here is basically reinforcing or building a base. And that's why I'm get, having such a positive effect with my training. Um, so yeah, that, that's the explanation in my head. Uh, maybe things change, like I said to you. Maybe things change when you advance an elite. Um, Maybe we shouldn't do five sets of fives if we are rookie muffins. Maybe we should do, you know, sets of 10 at 70% or at 65% and just do that year round until we have some sort of respectable numbers. You know, because if, you're, if, you're, if you weigh 100 kilos and you're squatting 200 kilos, you're, you're not elite. You're really not. Like you're doing double, double uh, body weight squat, which is, uh, that's not impressive by any stretch of the animation. Like when you start pushing, you know, triple your body weight, um, that's when you start getting to the advanced and the elite um, and maybe then you should kind of uh, do less volume um, I don't know I don't know I'm just thinking out loud I hope you guys get something out of this um, I don't know I, I still feel like I should be doing 60 to 70 most of my time um, even though I'm doing less there I'm doing more kind of below 60% um, but yeah you just when you find something that works you just keep hammering at that you know um, you can get almost paralyzed with reading literature and, and reading and reading and reading. Sometimes you just have to go out and experience for yourself and see, see what's up. Anyway, I'm going to do three reps here with 120. Scratch your head, doesn't it? Um, when when most people recommend doing five sets of five for a novice program, it's interesting, man. Like, I'll show you the first. I'll show you right here, so you guys know exactly what's up. This is the first. You can you can see that. This here, Texas method, is my first template that I wrote for myself. I basically took Texas method and I think I followed it to the T. I might have changed something, but basically it was faster to five all the way through. Um, you know, volume day Monday, maximum day Friday, and then what they call a development or recovery day on Wednesday. So three days a week training, five sets of five, you focus. That's what I did. Come on, man, like five sets of five can't be recommended from day one all the way to the Olympic level athletes. Uh, you know. Anyway, uh, this this uh, Texas method relies on linear progression, so you're adding you know weight and whatever every week. Um, what are five pounds? Whatever the hell it is, I can't remember exactly. I think it's five to ten pounds. Ten pounds for lower lifts and five for upper body lifts. Um, but yeah, like how could there be the same rules? You know, 
the dudes who are Olympic level athletes are spending most of their time with lifting 80%. So that means day one guy should be lifting 80%. Makes no sense to me. I think a bodybuilder type kind of uh, approach where you're doing a whole lot of sets, 8 to 12 is much, much better, even up to 20 if you ask me. You just get blood in there, get protein in there, get, you know, nutrition in there, just circulation, circulation. Build a base, you know. Um, that's, that's what I would recommend for people that are starting out. You know, I'm five, five years in basically, five years in or something. You know, messing around with all different things and whatever, trying, trying out all sorts of things. And I think right now, even after five years, I feel like there's a lot of value to be had around 60 to 70 percent. Probably one rep max. But I don't know, man. Don't know what to believe anymore. All right, 140. front squats, shoulders bothering me, so I'll, I'll go back squats, I'll take it from there, I'll do 144, a whole bunch of reps, what did I do 144? Uh, so four days ago I did 144.5, maybe I'll rep that out today, try and get 10. Try and do 140 for 10. Yeah, I reckon that'll be good. And then I'll put 160 on and try and get, no, 150. 150 for eight I did yesterday. That was all right. All right, let's get to it. I felt I didn't lose count there. So that was 140 for 10. Oh. Did I catch my breath? So 140, that's around 70%, I think. I said a 10. So now I'll go to 160. I'll try and get five there. Uh, While I'm catching my breath, might as well load the bar. But yeah, I think it's much better if you do, you know, set to 10 as somebody that's not squatting three times the body weight. Um, build some lean muscle, man. Put some of that meat on. You know, for the longest part, I thought doing sets of, you know, 90% upwards is going to build muscle. It won't. 
unless you're enhanced, I can finally say to you that I've given it a good go and I don't think there's any anything there in terms of muscle building. You will build technical proficiency, you're gonna get really good at handling weight, balancing the weight, uh, but in terms of building that raw horsepower, I don't think you're gonna build it there. You know, the lead guys spend most of their time in the 80s, 80% range, so if you're not around there, I think you should be closer to 70, to be honest. Spend most of your time there. I don't know what it is about, there's a lot of coaches out there who just recommend doing the same shit that the top dudes do. Uh, that can't be right, man. Intuitively speaking, that can't be right. You know, if you were to start running tomorrow and train for marathons, you're not gonna start running like the top guy. No way, man. You do, you do your shit. You know, you're on a different level, man. You can't step into the ring with Mike Tyson, Tyson on day one. You get fucking murdered. So, spend most of your time with a lot of weights. Um, stay true to your form and just get the volumes in, man. Get, get, the, get the reps in. Eventually, when you start ripping out some of these weights, you can, you know, get better at it and better at it and all of a sudden now you're repping out, you know, two times your own body weight. Now we're talking. You know, but take it from me, man. I put in 150 50 odd days squatting every day, working to a heavy max, you know, training single max. Um, and while my lifting proficiency improved and I got really skilled at handling that weight, man, that's pathetic, pathetic freaking gains. Really pathetic. So, lesson learned. You know, that's the thing with me, like, I, I really give something a good go before I make a conclusion. That's the only way, like you can't, you can't do something for two, three weeks and be like, oh yeah, it doesn't work. No, you really have to give biology a, a good whack. Give it a good go with whatever stimulus you're trying to test. And then, you know, you can move away and say, no, it's not for me or whatever. Uh, but until then, you know, I don't think it's the right thing to do to just, you know, do something for a short while and, and uh, conclude. I think 150 days is a, it's a whole bunch of time. So take it from me, man. Do your sets of uh, 10, do your sets of 10 to 20. Um, whatever weight you use, just get the volume in. Get the pump into your quads, into your glutes, into your hamstrings. Um, if you're like me, you do a couple of sets each day that are challenging. Um, but if you're squatting three times a week, two times a week, once a week, then you're gonna have to kind of uh, get a lot more volume in per training session. For me, it's quite easy, man. I just come in here. So this was a hard set, you know, set of 10 at 140 which is around 70%. I'll do one set at 160, which is around 75 to 80%. Um, I'll do that for a set of five or whatever I may manage to do with this. Uh, so, you know, that's pretty much it for me. And after that, I'll do a single 180 and then I'll fail at whatever, 190 or 200, whatever I choose today. Uh, and that's it. So every day I've only got two, 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 you know, two sets that are really challenging. I mean, I have challenging sets in the warm ups like the 60 kilos front squat for a set of 20, that, that gets me pumped. That's kind of challenging, but it's not to this extent. It's so easy to get up and get motivated to train like this because you're not going to war every time. Like I've said this in the past, but I remember back in the day, man, shit used to be so difficult. You know, psyching myself up for five sets of five at freaking 80%. Dude, I used to dread that shit. I used to lose sleep over that crap. All right. Catch my breath a little bit more and then we'll get into it. <sighs> All right, so 160, let's get five here. What's my previous 160 rep max? Haven't done it for a while. I did 160 two days ago for one. Um, oh yeah, here we go. Four days ago I did 160 for set of five. Maybe I can get more. We'll see. I've kind of already put in the work with the 140 kg. All right, let's see what I can do.
160 for six. All right. That was all right. Getting better with this hard rep stuff. What does that mean? Does that mean I'm getting stronger? <laughs> How would you do? explain that? Am I getting weaker? If I'm getting better at sets of six and 10, Tough work, a lot harder than sets of one, two, and three. <sighs> All right, now load the bar to 180. Do a one there. So 180, if I can get here, set of two, that'd be great. But I've got jelly legs on me now, so it's kind of unlikely. It's so weird to train when you're fatigued. It's a new experience for me. I haven't done this in a while, but I like it. You feel like you're actually training. So reading that book last night, they were talking about different muscle uh, fibers. They were talking about, uh, you know, slow twitch, fast twitch fibers, and how slow twitch fibers are, you know, much smaller in, in dimensions, in uh, diameter, and uh, how when we're doing sets of five, we're basically just targeting the fast twitch fibers. And a lot of the slow twitch fibers never get fatigued. And in the book they said, if, you, if the fiber is not fatigued, it's not trained. So some of these fibers that we, we, we target with sets of five, so the fast twitch fibers, they get hammered, obviously, they get fatigued. But the slow twitch fibers never get any action because you know the, the sets never last more than 20 seconds. <clears throat> I think 20 to 30 seconds, some of these sets should last if you want to get into some of the slower twitch fibers. A lot of people think the slow twitch fibers have no effect on, on, on performance in terms of you know, power output, strength output. They still do work, um, it's just they're smaller. Um, I read somewhere that the difference between a fast and a slow, slow twitch fiber is the, 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 the diameter. So the fast twitch fiber is bigger and that's the only reason why it's stronger. You know, per unit size, um, they're, they're the same strength. So if you would chop that fast, fast twitch fiber in half and, and you know, to the same size of a slow twitch fiber, that would have the same amount of you know, force output. So there are, there are some value, there is some value in tr uh, training the slow twitch fibers as well. They can contribute to your strength. Mm. But in order for you to train them to get stronger, um, you need to you know, do sets that last longer than 20 seconds. Something like that, 20 to 30 seconds. Which you're not gonna be able to do if you're doing a set of five. Uh, you know, really you should be doing a set of, I don't know, 10 to 20 if you want to get into that sort of stuff. Whew. All right, here we go. 80 on the bar, 180 on the bar. Let's see what I can do with this. Let's put this camera in a weird spot now. Is this going to be good at all? Look at that. Getting really fancy with these damn cameras. Whew. Oh boy. Only one today. Oh 
man, that's tough. Oh, let's put 180, sorry, 190, and we'll call it, call it a day today. Man, that was a tough one. So this is gonna be a fail for sure. Whew. Ah. Maybe tomorrow I'll, uh, I'll do less volume tomorrow and try and hit 190 for a single. Just trying to drive that volume up. That's my number one focus. It's all about the damn volume. All right. Time to fail, guys. Let's try and sit in the hole, think about life, and then roll the bar backwards. So, focus here is control the bar on the way down, sit in the hole, feel the weight, maybe try and push off a little bit and see, but 180 moves real slow, this is not gonna go up. Such a crushing feeling when you when you put the weight on your back and you're like, damn, this is so heavy, it's not gonna go up. Uh, but the ability to kind of keep the, black, the back flat, keep the, the torso upright, I guess I'm training that portion really well. It's just the legs, there's no power in the legs anymore after all those reps. Uh, but anyway, another day, another fail. And uh, yeah, I recommend you guys reconsider on how many reps you do and how many sets you do. How much volume you get in what sort of rep range just give it a give it a, th a think i think is the best approach here um just question what you're doing question the program that you're doing ask yourself why am i doing this if i'm you know a rookie muffin or i'm intermediate um if it's working for you by all means man stay with what's working i'm just saying uh, for me it's not working and uh i'm getting a lot of uh joy and a lot of success um, a lot of growth out of doing a lot of weight anyway guys catch you tomorrow